Hey everyone, uh, this is Cool Kid. We're doing another One Piece chapter review. And, uh, yeah, we're reviewing chapter, what is it, uh, 985. And, um, I'm going to be honest, this is a really, really, really good chapter. And, okay, okay, it's still, I thought I'd move for a second, but it's a really good chapter. And, I gotta be honest, uh, I actually read the spoilers before the chapter came out, and I'm telling you, when I read the spoilers first, and I thought, dude, if any of this is true, it's going to be a really good chapter, and it was true, so, uh, yeah, let, let's get started on the chapter review, which, uh, starts with, uh, not the chapter, but the cover page, yeah, yeah, the cover page, which, uh, has just basically Luffy... Kid, Law, just eating a bunch of rice balls on giant parrots. Cool. That that that's neat. Um, I mean, if I had more planning, if I planned this better, I probably would have brought rice balls to the review. But whatever. Uh, let's get into the you know actual start of the chapter where uh, we're in the back entrance of uh, Oni Gashima Lash. I remember with the. The red scabbards, and uh, we see Conjuro come out. And he's basically like, "Well, I knew you would come here. I since there were no samurai spot, but I, I knew you would come here no matter what." And then we just see Conjuro come out with uh, a bunch of basically random beast pirate members, and well, there there are two. I guess people we see is of interest, these two, uh, I guess, samurai, headless samurai horsemen. And uh, even uh, Gonchiro even says they're supposed to look like you when you're when I'm done with you. So, you know, that, that's the name with his, you know, obviously, uh, you know, through abilities. But, uh, yeah, uh, one of the Red Scabbers is like, uh, free Momonosuke, and, uh, he mentions, you know, a couple chap- I think it was two chapters ago? Yeah, yeah, two chapters ago, where he told Kaido about, you know, uh, how, uh, Momonosuke tried to escape, and he beat the crap out of him for that, so he goes into a little bit more detail, not so much detail, but he basically says, uh, Momonosuke takes the knife, he- broke free and uh, tried to run away, but somehow he, uh, I guess, managed to stab him in his hand and, and even look at the shot, it's not really that big of a stab, but, you know, he, you know, lit a fuse and just beat the living crap out of him. So, yeah, see, when I mean, not much more detail, but it's, it's a little more than, you know, what was mentioned in the chapter, but, but hey, give your mom no, okay. he's, he's actually, well, you know, I don't know, I feel like Mono is going to have at least a little bit more importance in this arc, or at least doing something more impressive at some point, yeah, but, uh, I mean, continuing, he goes on to talk about, uh, Mononosuke's execution, and after, all I have to do is just stall for time, then the Kazuki lie will be done for, ha ha ha. And, um, I like how, while Contra who is, you know, telling about, uh, you know, Mononosuke's execution, uh, Inarashi and Nekamumushi are, you know, talking to each other, it's like, Inarashi's like, uh, Hey, what's up with that arm now? And Nekomushi's like, Oh yeah? I got this. It's a gun arm. And uh, Iranshi's like, Nice, that that is pretty cool. So, I kind of like that while that happens, but um, after uh, Kanjiro, you know, tells his, I guess, whole thing about Monosuke's execution, Okiku putting on her samurai helmet, and, uh, just saying, <sighs> Contro, I will have to ask you to be quiet from now on. Because, you know, the scars that are left by my blade still linger even after death. Because the wound that I'm going to give you is going to hurt even after death. 
And uh, Contra's like, well, bring it on, Nokiku. And they just, you know, go in for a, a clash? Yeah, yeah. They go in for a clash, and then we see, uh, you know, both sides being ready for a fight. Then we go back into the castle, and then we got him, uh, and some you know, Beast Pirate member says, uh, Hey, Ghost, we just started. Put, turn on the video, Dead Dead Mushy. And uh, then we transition to the attic. Wow, that, that, that didn't take very long to do another transition. But uh, we're in the attic. It basically starts with uh, Yamato just like, Well, I thought you would let me board your ship since you're Ace's little brother. Yeah, uh, hey, hey guys. Uh, re remember, you know, how I said, you know, in the Yamato discussion video, how I wanted Yamato... A straw hat? Well, um, yeah, I think this is basically Oda just saying, uh, Yamato for straw hat. Like, it, like, it's really not very subtle. It, it's just being told to us, and I think this chapter basically confirms for me, at least, Yamato for straw hat, but, but hey, Hey, they're, they're, I mean, she at, might at least be an ally at, at the least. So, so, hey, we, we gotta wait for, you know, that kind of stuff. Then, uh, Luffy and Yamato get a little, uh, argu argument. But after that little argument, uh, we get some important details about Yamato himself. Like, uh, he, he says, uh, even if I'm Odin, I'm not free. Because of these handcuffs, yeah. Uh, the handcuffs, they aren't exactly, you know, for decoration or anything. Uh, from Yamato's perspective, he, he says, well, I wanted to go with C with Ace. But uh, ever since I was eight, I was forced to stay on the island. And uh, if he were to leave the island, the handcuffs would just explode. Yeah. Yeah, they would, they, they would literally explode. Uh, you know, father of the year, guys, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm starting to tell you who those people who thought, you know, Kyo was a good dad from last chapter. I don't think Kyo's a good dad. No, no, no. And even Luffy's like, like, honestly, I wonder if that's not a lie. What kind of parent would do that to their child? Even, yeah, Luffy has never had no uh, bad parental figures. Well, okay, okay. Garb did literally throw him in the middle of the jungle. Okay, okay. Maybe Luffy might not have the best examples. Uh, never mind. Um, let's let's go back to the chapter. And like, uh, even Yamato says, well, uh, you, my father is just that kind of guy, Luffy. Is like, well, you want me to remove them for you? Yamato goes with a, what? And uh, Luffy's like, well, but I need to know that you'll fight alongside us. Because with or without you, I'm going to beat Kaido. And Yamato's like, well, I, I, I want to beat him as much as you do. Do you know how many times I've been hit since I, I was a kid? Every time I oppose him... The only thing he answered me was with punches. So, so yeah, uh, I would guess both Luffy and Yamato do have a, uh, a burning passion to uh, take down Kaido. So, so uh, that's good. And uh, Luffy says, well, okay, I, I, I'm going to remove them. And Yamato mentions, well, it's been 20 years since my freedom has been stolen away from me with them. So, okay, at least with this, we know Yamato's age range where, uh, let me just scroll up to make sure I got it right. He said he had those since he was, yeah, he had those since he was eight. And then he says, uh, it's been 20 years. So he's 28. And that means I was right. I got, I guess this age right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, finally, I actually guessed something right. In a chapter that isn't, you know, the complete opposite. Yay for me! But uh, yeah, 28. So you know, at least at least I got his age right, right? 
But uh, uh, then we go to, uh, I guess, uh, uh, Adended Mushi Monitor of Kaido giving a speech. And now, what will happen is we'll transition every now and again from, you, you know, from the monitor to, you know, where he's actually taking place his speech in the, the center, I think. Yeah, the center of the the castle. So we'll transition then there and uh, also, you know, Yamato and Luffy are uh, taking a peek from the act to see this. So, you know, we'll, we'll change through those perspectives in the chapter, okay? So Kaido's speech starts off with him um, talking about the, the government, they dispel the CG Bukai system, and they have their new force to fight against us since they're so confident with it. And we, we know it's the SSG at this point. Um, I actually don't know what's really up with the SSG, what exactly it is, but whatever it is, um, I, I, I guess I'll talk about that in our video. But uh, Kaido's like, never mind about those Marines. On our side, we have allied with the Big Mom crew, and we will get the world's strongest weapon, the ancient weapon. So, so what what this kind of implies here that that when he says this, um, th this kind of implies in my mind that you know he knows how to get to one, because um, let me think. Neptune, that's Shirahoshi, and I don't think it's common knowledge that she's Neptune. So, you know, if Kaido were to somehow learn that she's Neptune, which means Kaido plans to actually uh, go to Fishman Island, which is kind of surprising. There's also, uh, you know, uh, Pluton and Uranus, which, one, we have no idea what Uranus is, but we do know Pluton is, well, a, a giant ship, a giant battleship. We, we don't know exactly what it is, but we do know it's a giant battleship. So, uh, it, it, this saying, phrasing, means that, at least from my perspective, Kaido somehow knows to get to one of them, uh, probably... I would say, well, okay, okay, that, that brings to a better question. Uh, you know, how could he read Poniglas? Because uh, I think Big Mom was trying to use uh, pudding. Yeah, yeah, pudding to, you know, when, to use her third eye ability to read Poniglas. And what I'm trying to think is, I don't think at this point it's been revealed what, how Kaido would get to read Poniglyphs. Um, I'm, I'm sure... I'm sure he has someone in his crew that he could read Poniglyphs, or hell, even he could read Poniglyphs, but he has someone that can do that. So, I, I, he probably got this information from a Poniglyph, but whatever it is, ha him having any of the ancient weapons is terrifying. Then a uh, big mom shows up, and she's like, you call for me, Kaido, and she's got all her... Uh, brand new home is, and we also see the fact that, uh, yeah, Kiru Tanami got their ass kicked by, uh, by Big Mom. Uh, I don't see Sanji at all, so, uh, I don't know if, if Sanji's, like, sneakily behind Big Mom, or, uh, is basically peeping on a bunch of girls. I have no clue, honestly. I, I don't even got it. God damn clue and uh okay uh, kaido is like well since she's here okay we're going to get serious from now on and uh he claims we're going after the one piece which um when, when i heard that something came across my mind i was like hey, we're going for the one piece i mean they went i mean functionally I thought of something, I was like, wait, what if Kaido, he knows the location of where could the, the last Poneglyph be? Because we, we know where, we know where three of them are. Uh, Big Mom has control one in Whole Cake Island, or, or Totland. Um, then, uh, let's see, Kaido's got one in Onigashima. Uh, there's one on Zo, 
But the last one, it, it was on Fishman Island, you know, in the Odin Flash book. But, uh, you know, in the present storyline, when the Straw Hats went there, that there was no Rogue Pond Club. There was only the, the apology letter that Joy Boy wrote. But, uh, yeah, I've been thinking, you know, if for essentially Kaido to, to say we're going to the One Piece, he must know where wherever the final uh, location of that Poneglyph is, because if, because essentially, you gotta think about in his eye, because, you know, he, he him plus Big Mom, they got two of the Poneglyphs, okay? And uh, they know where Zoe is, and if they were to know where the last one is, they probably would rally up and, you know, try to take down those spots again, so, you know, I'm, I'm wondering, does he know where the last location of the last Ropon glyph is? You know, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, uh, he, he claims the existence of the, of the ancient weapons will cause fear and chaos around the world. It'll be prepared because it's a chaotic world. And uh, we got uh, Orochi being like, oh, I didn't expect that. And um, we got a little scene of, I guess, Luffy and Yamato, and, and Luffy's like, the One Piece, it's mine! But, uh, yeah, then we go back with uh, Kaido, and he's like, for those who work for Orochi, choose, because Wano is uh, both safe from the Marines and the world government. A natural force is surrounded by waterfalls, and if we were to increase the number of weapon factories and put the people in the flower capital to work, then, for all pirates, this would become a lawless area, a paradise to them. And, uh, uh, freaking, uh, Rochi is like, hey, okay, wait, the flower capital is my territory. Who do you think gave you all those weapons? And freaking the next panel is just Kaido slices uh, freaking Orochi's head off. And uh, to be honest, if I didn't read the spoilers, I'll be shocked as all hell. And even reading the chapter, I was shocked as all hell. So I was like, oh my god, did, did he really? It, yeah, he, he really did. And also, I was always wondering, wait, when, where did he get a sword? And, uh, I did notice later that it was King in the background, like, a uh, whole, it's like this. Uh, I'm gonna get one of my swords. Like, King's in the background, like this, and kind of just reaches and, you know, goes for the kill. Hey, I knew uh, Ichigo's Bankai uh, Zangetsu would be useful for something. Uh... Yeah, well, I'll just leave it right here. Yeah, hey man, you got. Wait, does it even show up on the camera? Uh, who cares? But yeah, yeah, uh, Kaido freaking slices Orochi's head off. Um, you know, I guess the people might be asking, is Orochi dead? Um, my my senses are telling me no. Orochi's not going to die because it's been set up at this point where just a bunch, like a ton of people, basically just want Orochi to die. So I, I don't think, um, I don't think Orochi's dead. Just uh, just something tells me, you know, why he he's probably you know whenever the fighting actually starts and uh, you know he's going to sneak off with anyone noticing that's probably what's going to happen but uh yeah pretty much like uh if we see like the audience like the beast pirates and the samurai they are like shocked as all hell and he's like oh your minions you got five seconds juice samurai you either become pirates with us or you fight us and you die so yeah kyle basically gave an ultimatum to all of Orochi's underlings, and I'm gonna be honest, I, I don't really see any of them being like, uh, I, I guess uh, we'll just, uh, we'll fight you guys, but uh, no, I, I feel like they're, they're probably almost immediately going to be like, 
Uh, yeah, I, I think we'd rather be pirates than die, so, yeah, um... Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, Kaido goes back to his speech, and he's like, we gotta prepare ourselves for the final war. Back coming, we're going to turn this country into the pirate empire. Uh, and then he's like, tonight, we're transferring Onigashima to... The flower capital. So, uh, yeah, I I was kind of confused when he said that. At first, I was like, wait. Because there's, there's two ways you could take it. He's going to make, uh, you know, the flower capital, the, the new Onigashima. Or, he's literally going to take Onigashima, somehow move it, and just drop it on top of the flower capital. So... I have no idea what the hell is that supposed to mean, but yeah, freaking, that, that's what Kaido's plan is, and even he says, well, you know, it'll be the end of Wano, and this country will be now named New Onigashima with the Shogun Big My Son, ha <laughs> ha. Then next scene is just a uh, Luffy and. Yamato just making a mad dash for uh, Kaido with Yamato big, like just pissed. He's like, hell no, there's no way that is going to happen. You goddamn stupid old man. And Luffy, who's actually kind of level head, says, come on, just show me the way quickly or uh, freaking uh, Momonosuke is going to die. Some random Beast Pirate members in the background, they're like, Hey, contact the, uh, the Flying Six, and, uh, the ch chapter ends, basically, there. And, uh, let me look. Um, I don't, I don't know if it's just because of this translation, but, uh, uh, it doesn't mention anything about there bring a break or not. Um, I'll have to read the official translations, which you should, when it comes out, because, uh, I, I like to read the official translation when I can, uh, but to, yeah, chapter ends, and wow, um, I guess I'll mention the first thing, uh, you know, the, the new Onigashima plan, yeah, that, that's pretty insane, because essentially Kaido's plan is, okay, we, we're going to turn uh, Wano into essentially a lawless zone for all pirates, and essentially, I guess the citizens just, um, uh, nothing more than slave workers and getting one of the ancient weapons it will soon have the One Piece and will cause this great war that we'll win. So, uh, yeah, Kaido's plan is kind of in insane and as I said earlier, he, he must know at least, you know, something about the locations of one of the ancient weapons. He, he has a, I wonder who in his crew, uh, yeah, you know, can read Ponglyphs or even him. That, that would be interesting if he could read Ponglyphs and um, I have no clue, uh, you know, where this is heading. But yeah, Yamato for Straw Hat, yes. Um, I really think Yamato is probably um, going to join the Straw Hats. I mean, at this point... You know, in this chapter, it is, isn't really subtle. It's just kind of dropped there. And I, I could definitely see Yamato just being, after, you know, everything's said and done. And Yamato joins the Straw Hats, yay! But, um, you know, this, this makes me kind of mad. Well, not mad, but, you know, makes me conflicted. Because I, I want Carrot to join the Straw Hats, too. But, to, you know, since we haven't really seen... You know, two straw hats join at once. I mean, that would be cool, but, you know, who would I have? Carrot or Yamato? Yamato all the way, yeah. Um, I'm ready for that, so let me look. Uh, I guess I could talk about, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I, I definitely still think that Orochi, he, he is definitely, I think, still alive somehow. Um, I'm pretty sure, and, you know, if he's actually, like, just, you know, Kaido straight up killed him 100% like that, 
I would actually be kind of, you know, that, that would be surprising, but I, I think I would be okay with that. And some people I, I know aren't going to be okay with that. They're like, oh, what about all of these characters who, you know, want to take out uh, Orochi and, you know, Kaido does it. You know, I know people are going to be like that, but I, I think this actually kind of makes sense since, you know, especially a couple chapters ago, you know, the whole thing about, you know, Pirates Alliances don't last. And we got this alliance essentially with Wano and the Beast Pirates. This is showing that essentially Kaido is just done with Wano. He, he's just going to, you know, take it for himself. So, so at least I, I, I like that saying. Um, I don't know. Let me look uh, real quickly if there's any other things I should mention. Uh, I still think it's kind of weird that uh, we have not I mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know I said this earlier, but uh, I think it's possible that Sanji's, you know, sneakily behind following Big Mom. Nah, he's probably just peeking on some women. Good old Sanji, perving out when we're in the middle of a battle, of course. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, hmm. I guess I could talk about the... Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Let me talk about Conjuro, actually. Because this, this chapter plays an interesting perspective. Because, he, let's just say, you know, uh, Orochi dies just long enough if he's supposedly dead. And if he, he stays dead for long enough for Conjuro to find out. And he's like, well, do I join the Beast Pirates? Or do I fight with the Red Scabbers? Because essentially, he, he's been, uh, you know, Orochi's lapped off for all this time. And it, it didn't even a couple chapters ago, he, you know, he, he said that he, he felt genuinely, you know, sad. And, you know, he, he felt all those moments. But he's doing what he's supposed to do as an actor. So I, I wonder, could this make a moment where, you know... He decides, you know what, I'll be going for the Red Scabbards. But, you know, even if he does, I, I do see, especially with, like, Okiku. Uh, Okiku, in this chapter, if you read it, it, it I, don't, I don't really think. Even if, let's just say, uh, Kanjiro switches sides again. I don't think Okiku would be up for it in... Um, what else I could talk about this chapter? I, I guess that's really it. I could talk about how long I think, I don't know. I don't know. Because, oh wait, I'm actually, wait, let me look at this chapter again. Uh, where's Law? Oh shit, actually. Uh, hey, is, is that weird? Because I just know it's because I think last chapter Law was, uh, with them, right? Yeah. Unless a law, you know, transported himself back to the ship, so that's weird. I don't see law at all in this chapter. Huh. I wonder. Is, is that going to be an important detail? Is that going to be an important detail? Who knows? We'll, we'll find out soon enough. But, yeah, I think I'll end this chapter here. So, uh, yeah, guys, ready to see whatever happens next chapter, which, um, I think next chapter... You know, we're actually, the battle is actually going to start, okay? It's actually going to start. This time, for real. Okay, guys? I, I, that's what I think. And, um, you know, I, I guess I have to mention I'm kind of disappointed that, you know, we didn't get an a encounter with uh, Yamato and who's who before, you know, the battle actually starts. But, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll get it. So, you know, next chapter... Definitely, you know, the big rumbles going to fight, and I, I guess everyone in disguise is going to reveal themselves. So, yeah, wh whatever happens, I'm excited to see this. I freaking love this chapter of One Piece. Creating Attack on Titan, then One Piece, and hopefully we don't got a break. So I can, you know, I'm just always excited for One Piece. So, you know, next time uh, we'll read... 
One Piece chapters or whatever. So yeah, I'll see you next time when the battle on Onigashima starts for real with the real battle. I don't, I don't like this. Come on. Come on, Zangetsu. We're going. Actually, actually, that, that's a better end, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah.